One time for you, Ken Tong, ladies and gentlemen. My family comes from Romania, and um, they go way far back um, with this uh, with this Romanian uh, gypsy family or circus family. And uh, they used to do this act that I heard about when I was a kid. Um, and, and what was really amazing about it, it was um, an extraordinary circus act. It was one of the most amazing circus acts there's ever been. Um, and, uh, but it was never duplicated, it was never actually replicated. Um, and if, if you know anything about the history of circuses, there's almost never been an amazing act that hasn't been duplicated. And this one never was, <clears throat> and I'll explain why in a minute, but first I'll tell you what the act was. Um, uh, first of all, they were very sickly people. Uh, generation after generation, they were just incredibly sickly, um, and, and they were always coughing, and they passed this act down, and they were really legendary for never speaking to any of the other performers backstage. They wouldn't say a word. They'd just sit there silently, coughing and hacking. And um, until it was their turn to go out, when it was their time to go out, they'd walk out into the center ring, and they'd just stand there, kind of looking like they're about to pass out. And there'd be this incredible silence. And everybody would just be waiting. And when the tension just got to this incredible fever pitch, slowly they'd lean back and open their mouths and begin pulling European cities out of their mouths. Block after block, street after street, city after city, with recognizable landmarks and everything. They were dehydrated. They were dehydrated European cities. And, and how they did it was this. They had the little dehydrated pellets in between the fingers. When they went out and covered their mouths, when they coughed, they'd drop in a pellet. Their mouths were full of saliva and seawater, which they'd been collecting for two hours up to the show, which is why they never spoke to anybody. <clears throat> but the thing that nobody could ever figure out, um, the amazing secret, was how to make the dehydrated European city pellets. And, and the way that they kept this secret is, is what I think is so beautiful. Um, generation after generation, they never actually spoke this secret in words. Never once did anybody in that family ever speak the secret out loud. When their kids were little, they teach them these songs. And when they got old enough, they teach them a code. And it was a musical code. And what happened was, was that as modern culture encroached on circus culture and on Romania, eventually there wasn't anybody left that understood the code. And so now all that's left are the songs. And this is one of them.
brought home your seven-foot-tall metronome. But, how do you begin? Standing before you is a seven-foot-tall metronome, a machine, a title of chronos, a sight to behold, and a force to be reckoned with. Every time the giant arm swings back and forth, a child is born somewhere in the world. Using the patented pedal control three mallet system, the user controls not one beat, not two beats, but three beats at once. The tempo, or speed, of the metronome is controlled by a rheostat mounted conveniently on the metronome's back by Velcro. <laughs> this allows one to play the programmed beats at speeds to suit all occasions, from the very fast to the very slow. Each of the mallets, when activated, strikes an exciting different surface. The metronome can even play sleigh bells. The first metronomes were as big as a city block. The seven-foot-tall metronome not only regulates the otherwise ungoverned flow of time, it creates rhythm. It not only tames music, it creates music. The machine, taller than any head of state or professional athlete, has a temporal authority that exceeds all human authority, and its power and might on stage easily outshines any puny metronomeless rock group. When programming, follow correct programming procedure. Remember, the loss of a hand can be easily prevented. The loss of one hand and one eye can be easily prevented. The loss of both hands, both eyes, hand and arm together, loss of the head, the loss of life, can be easily prevented. Warning! Never touch the pegs or wheels unless safety light is on. Programming the metronome without the safety light on can result in almost certain death! Think of all the injuries that could have been avoided but for the unthinking waving and greeting, the blowing of kisses, emphatic gestures, the use of sign language when spoken language will do, not to mention pushing or shoving, jumping, leaping, or moving one's own arm in sympathy with the metronome's arm. These warnings heeded and good judgment exercised. Many happy hours of music making and time measuring are in store for you.